the west side of Chicago. It's the Craig Show, starring Gregory Stroop. I'm Scotty Joe Vegas, inviting you to stay tuned in the next 30 minutes because you'll hang out with me and meet a young entrepreneur, a young nice man, Emilio Morone. Oh, that's Italian. And here's a man who's paying for the shirt gig, Mr. Gregory. Roll it out there. Cruise. Yeah, give us some love, baby. How do, how do you top that, kids? We got the kids back here again tonight. Thank you. Welcome back to The Greg Show. And I am Greg Struess, Chicago's least known TV personality. <laughs> Amen. And it would help if I had a personality. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Bob. We're going to do some shtick tonight. We were talking before the show about our, our old friend uh, from Thorn. Actually, I think he went to Thornwood, John Grossman. Maybe that's why. Yeah, they named a theater after him. Really? Yeah, it was really filthy. All right. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's take a look at what's happening in the news. A Florida man who was convicted of engaging in sexual activity with a young donkey. That's terrible. Has picked up another case. Hmm. Carlos Romero was arrested uh, for stealing 16 train batteries. When caught in question, Carlos stated, I thought, it that was, I thought that it was a cool way of meeting the Energizer Bunny. Hello. Yes. <laughs> That's entertainment. <laughs> Gotta believe, folks. Gotta believe. <laughs> Gotta throw that in every once in a while. Anyway, we have a uh, good show tonight. Young man, we always, we always have to hear. I, I was looking on Craigslist because there's, there's always interesting topics on there, and somebody's doing some research for what's known as the recession generation. So the recession generation are those folks right now, the kids that are in school, right. or the young people as we call them, the youngsters, are... You know that are getting ready to graduate. Mm -hmm. That the recession generation is. You know, we used to go to school to hopefully get the better job and do the things and mm -hmm. not still be doing cable. You know, thirty years later, and um, <laughs> or, <someone. laughs> or something like yeah. that. And so now today, a lot of these kids are are coming out of school with all the you know financial debt, the worries, all those things, and still having to do many of the summer type jobs that they were doing before. Right. So I, I thought as we were talking, why not have someone from the recession generation? All right. Right? Fantastic. But for us, in our 40s, the recession generation was usually the hair going, right? Wasn't it? The, the receding generation. Something or the overhang. Like yeah, it was the overhang. It really wasn't a joke. We have uh, young Emilio Maroney will be with us tonight to inspire us with his story. You should look at the camera and pose. I'm, hi. And to, uh, <laughs> I'll say hi to you. Ed, Ed's back. How are you? Ed, do you remember John Grossman? No. I, I went to school with John Grossman. He was really cool. And then we have, yeah, the kids are back. Anyway, I am Greg. This is The Greg Show, and Focus. we are reinventing community television in the west side of Chicago. And we'll be back in just a moment. Thank All you. right. <laughs> Let's take it out, folks. We're at Pelega Prosthetics Incorporated here in GR, East Town, actually, and we're talking with Tom about prosthetics. Why should people, well, first of all, let's talk about what prosthetics are. Prosthetics are artificial limbs. Uh, can be also a hip internally, but in our business, it's artificial limbs, which we make uh, below knee legs, above knee legs, arms, whatever. Do you like a towel to dry your face yes, up? Yes, I would. <laughs> Does Tom spell your last name one more time? P O L E G A. Okay. Palega. Isn't that funny? Leg? Pa leg. Isn't that strange? No connection. It just worked out that way. Now over here we take a look. We have some what is this considered? This is considered a... This, uh, this is considered an above elbow prosthesis. It's myoelectrically controlled. Which means? Which means it has some electrodes inside here that with her muscle control, she makes the hand open and close with a motor and a battery that's installed inside the arm. If she was to wear, use a body-powered arm, she'd have to supply all the energy where this does it for her. Tom, the process begins by uh, us actually taking a cast of the patient. We work by a doctor's prescription, I believe. It's, it's, Do you ever have a casting agent come in here? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a flex foot. Well, the flex foot is built for running, storing energy, very strong. person wearing this supposedly uses less energy, 
Most people can get by with this, but if you're very active, use a flex foot. We wrap a plaster of Paris cast on a patient's stump, the remaining portion of the arm or leg that has been amputated. Take it off. Remove that from them within five minutes. I was going to ask you plaster of Paris. Plaster. Why do they call it Paris? I don't know. The rubber bands close it, and the rubber bands provide the power. Each rubber band provides approximately one pound of pressure. So can you box and you got a real mean right hook? Well, if you, if you do, you might get in some big trouble because it can make some blood on somebody. <laughs> Sounds like you're doing a show here. You have a cast, you have an agent. What else do you have? Uh, we don't have the good part. <laughs> Goodness, we are yeah. back. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Your glasses are sticky. That's oh, how much. They're, they're readers, and I tell you, my favorite store now, as I do a Tom Brokaw. Tom Brokaw. <laughs> yes, he did. Minus the, what, did, what was he doing? He, he was doing a newscast, and then what do you take to sleep? What is that stuff? Oblivion. The, the new yeah. one that puts you to sleep for, Ambien. yeah. So he's like, <laughs> Tom Brokaw, I accidentally took an Ambien. And I don't know if he was having a couple martinis the night before or what. And so he had to be rushed to the hospital for a little blood, blood pressure. <laughs> Stop. I'm right back. Stop it. <laughs> so anyway, I think that, we, so, so we talk in between, you know, the segments here. And, and sometimes we kind of have to watch ourselves, especially since we have all the... It's all the help. All the help, all the help, help you. help is here now. That's right. Salid, Salid call, calls it. Do you need the boys to come out? And I'm like, don't they have a curfew? <laughs> so they have homework, and they're like, yeah, come That's on nice out. That's nice that they so came. It great. There's, it's nice that the whole crew. Yes. It's nice. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Uh, we are on, uh, well, actually, I'm on Facebook. Uh, we're, we're working on getting a, a we're, we're working, what is it, a page for the show or something? <laughs> you got to talk to one of them 12-year-olds. Uh, yeah, that's what's funny. It's like, you know, I could talk to Celine, one of Celine's uh, sons, and in like two seconds, it's like, done. They're together. And me, it's like, I, I'm on there for two hours See? trying to figure this thing mm -hmm. out. And it's just, it's amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. Like, I got this, this high-tech phone now. And, and it has all these applications and stuff. You're but not alone. <laughs> certainly not going to be able to find a job. The other, right. uh, last week I was watching uh, the documentary channel. One of your old guests were on TV, The Rights of the Accused. They were, were they? They were. They were actually... Uh, they used to open up for uh, ministry. You weren't there. The story of Chicago Punk from 1979 to 1984, they were on there. So and you saw, saw them? Yep. Saw but them didn't you hire them? Scott used to always have like these... Um, he, he would go to a VFW... And rent it out for the weekend, not a weekend, but a night, right? A night. And then you would have these shows With where you would have buckets. all of these yeah. things. And he was like the ringmaster having all these people coming. And, and what was amazing is he, this was like back in the day with no, I'm feeling like I'm telling a war story here, but there's no such thing as the internet, there's no <laughs> cell phones. I was pounding no the pavement on the north side, south side, west side. This is before Scott Joe Vegas became a baby. So people, people had right. antennas on their TV and watched it over the air. Can you believe that? And it was on an TV, analog you had to unscrew signal? the scribble for the adult movies. Look, it was an analog, not a digital, okay? All yes. right. Gotcha. There was no such thing as Palm Pilots or anything else? It was else. a great story. It, it was, was a great was, story. Was, I'm sorry. It was so go sudden, ahead. It was, I'm, I'm done, actually. I'm, okay, so you ended up uh, having these shows, mm -hmm. and then what happened? Uh, hit rock bottom. <laughs> No, I mean, just I, a bunch of hardcore shows, like a bunch of p bands from the Chicago land area, the Gruesomes, Internal Bleeding, Johnny Vomit. Remember Johnny Vomit? I remember Johnny Vomit, but I never, I never saw, and, and you know what, I never went to the shows. A lot of those guys, horrible. they were all, uh, they, they did okay. You know, it was fun. We had uh, Michael Jackson post a rip-up contest, and Bozo Buckets, and you know what you're thinking about, too. <laughs> and uh, all I can say is I'm glad to be here, even though... Last time, the last show, we had a rough night, didn't we? We didn't really get into trouble, but we, we, we made some breakthroughs, and we ate some Italian beef. And, yeah, uh, so here we are after the show, and, and Celine had to take, you know, take, take the boys home. Yeah, had to take them to church. And, and he's like, let's go. I said, I, said, I want to take you to Salerno's in Oak Park. Yeah. Fantastic. And he's like, oh, no, 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 I, we're going to have prime rib oh, and yes. everything else Big at the shooters. casino in Hammond. So I don't go to casinos. 
Who I does? haven't been to one. They're I used to watch that movie with, who was it, with Bobby De Niro, and uh, that was a good Joe movie. Joe Pesci. Casino, yeah. So <clears throat> we go out, and, and I'm like, we're, we're playing this stuff, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, you just kept... It's, it's late night. It was late for us, because we're old now. We're not like the, the swinging cats anymore. We're just like, hey, you know, that's all I got. Okay. All right. I want to. I want to talk a little Greg bit about. Greg tried very hard to <laughs> help me as a person, and uh, it's a long story. It's 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 Hammond. I really feel like I could be on PBS right now with Tom Brokaw. Does he have right. PBS? I don't know. He he's, he does everything now. He's what, 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 what happens after you leave something? You become the alone. No, when you're in a college, situation, the academic, you're not. You're no longer. What what I'm trying to think of the word it is when you become like a big. Like the big deal, but you're not the big deal anymore. The president? No, you're, you're the... Um, the MC. No, when you have the position... I had the position. And when you leave that position, but you're still... You're yeah, still... It's yeah, called my first marriage. <laughs> <laughs> or second. I was in many positions that I was alone. <laughs> right. So... <laughs> So what, I want, I want to switch gears. I don't know how I can switch gears here. Okay. I, don't, I don't know if I can switch gears here. Anyway, th this is what's interesting. I think, I think if there's a way that we can help each other. Yes. I want, I want to segue into a little bit about how we as people can help each other out. So, you know, I believe Johnny Carson said it best when he said, if you want, ever want to help somebody out, the greatest gift is to help somebody out. And, and the greatest gift is them not knowing where it came from, Amen. not talking about what I did, okay? But how we can help people in certain ways. So there's three young guys who, I, who I've, I've gotten to know. They're in their late teens, early 20s, <clears throat> who dropped out of high school. And so they're working in a, you know, they're working, which is good. And, and so I, I, you know, have had a kind of soft sell for the last couple months of, uh, I'm being serious. I and, <laughs> and I said, you know, have you thought about finishing high school? And they're like, yeah, but. I said, but what? Well, I work all the time, or I do this all the time, or I do that all the time. And I said, well, I said, just because you didn't finish high school doesn't mean that you have to live in that. Amen. So they ended up going and, and signed up for school. So I'm so happy about that. <laughs> that was nice. Hold on a minute. This wasn't about me, but I, I thought just, we weren't supposed to talk how, about it. Just in how we, no, we're not talking about it, but oh. I'm saying because we're in this position of mass viewership in sharing how we can help. People think you're the answer man for everything. Absolutely. And sometimes you don't have the answer. No, I don't. You want to, but you got to be yes a little bit That's and give right. an answer. That's right. That's the truth. All right. When we return, we are going to, you know, we were talking earlier about this whole recession generation, and, and I just threw in about how <laughs> us, usually in our 40s, my hair is real. I don't know about yours. And uh, <laughs> men, men in their 40s usually recede. That's a whole different recession. My head but, just gets bigger. But the recession generation, you know, guys coming out of school and yeah. stuff. Stuff. Why am I saying stuff? Stuff? You're yeah. back in the 80s. I'm like, I'm an educated person. And, um, and so anyway, it's, it's, it's interesting. I want, I want to hear his take on, we're going to hear his take on what it's like to be in that recession. He looks like a, a good guest. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And we'll get to more of the fun. And more of the festivities All right. the show after this. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Woo! Leanne's favorite uh, <coughs> favorite treat seems to be. Great. Can I can I feed him? Absolutely. All right. Is there a secret to doing this? Just put your hand down. Put my hand up. Now, now, do they eat it right out of... Yes. Hello, pig. Uh, how do you do this? It's, it's, that's right. Just hold your hand up. Can I, I mean, they don't have teeth that yeah, chop or anything, do teeth, they? But he won't bite you. They don't bite. There's a good... They housebreak in 12 hours. There we they go. Have no <laughs> 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 that. So just like that, huh? That's it. Have the kids over, have a grape, have fun. <laughs> Wipe your hands off on the furniture. No one will ever know. Okay. <laughs> it's West Michigan's first local TV talk entertainment showgram. Don't miss Grand Alley with Gregory Strew Saturday nights at 1230 on Channel 3. Talking 
Kung Fu Diesel. Yes. Plays a soapbox, a tragedy. Oh, hand in hand with the so called misery. She takes it just so everybody knows she swallows. She makes it just so everybody knows she follows. Oh, come on. Do you feel secure? For making sure that you don't feel better Or Do you feel alive On this a hometown jive Oh Jay, you got something to say, come on Iron John plays a jukebox symphony On a flat top box guitar from Memphis, Tennessee Johnny, won't you play that old Elmo James for me? Yeah, yeah, but he just hung his head down low and played out his misery. So now, do you feel secure? I'm making sure that you don't feel bad. Do you feel alive on this a hometown jive? Oh, Bobby, come on. A Jonas bag gonna make it all cool someday hey. He's got a plan gonna make certain people pay Oh, but first he's gonna make it so Matilda gonna walk his way He'll never forget all the things people used to say secure or making sure that you don't feel better or do you feel alive on your uh, hometown jive oh gee you got one more thing come on elvis presley's got a painting hanging on my wall in times of trouble you know he's the one i call Sometimes I talk to him, you know he don't say nothing at all Yeah, that's when I pick up the phone and I give old Matilda a call Oh, sweet Ruby, too They said, now, do you feel secure? Making sure that you don't feel better Do you feel alive? On this, a hometown jive Hometown Jive. Yeah. Oh, Diesel. Hometown Jive. Thank you for coming out. Good, good. Dan Riggins. Glad he started to watch the record this on the Greg Stu Show. Thank you, thank you, and welcome back to the Lawrence Welk Show. It was great. We used to watch that every week. And then strangely and oddly, when I was, li when I was in college up at Grand Valley State University in Alnail, Michigan, we were talking a few weeks ago about our, how we did these pledge breaks on a station out in India. So my first gig doing pledge breaks was doing Lawrence Welk. Wow. Yeah, it was great. And Grandma Venus was watching and the whole nine years. Introduce your guest. Yes, okay. Um, I, I, was, I was coming across... Uh, you know, somebody on, on Craigslist was doing, is conducting some research for a book geared towards this recession generation. And, and I always hear, like, a lot of young people talk about how hard it is to get a job and whatever else is going on. And, and this guy's always working on something. And I thought he could give us some inspiration, some hope, and uh, tell us a little bit about what he's doing right now. Will you please welcome Emilio Maroney, everybody. All right. How are you, how are you doing? Good, good, good to see you. And he's a good sport, too. Scott was talking with him all throughout uh, beforehand. <laughs> he didn't corrupt you in any way, did he? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. Not yet. All right. So we're talking about, um, you know, this, this whole recession thing. 
And you just recently graduated from Loyola. I had a sister go to Loyola. My niece goes to Loyola. Another sister, I think, went to Loyola. Um, so how was that for you as you were getting ready to finish school, knowing and reading about jobs and such? Well, my major was in political science. Mm -hmm. So obviously, I've been immersed in the news all through college, and you know what's going on. Uh, and you saw like, kind of this intimidating uh, climb ahead of you. Uh, it just kind of just happened, and you roll with it. You try to roll with it. So uh, I was trying to think of ways uh, and to overcome that uncertainty. Um, so, I've, you know, trying to look for a job myself and uh, see where things would lead. And uh, next thing you know, I just decided, well, if I can't find a job, let's try to make one. So. And so that's what you're doing right now. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm. Uh, I started a company about a year and a half ago. And uh, we're trying to uh, break into uh, a studio, like try to become a, a film studio, uh, and whether it be fo our focus on historical stuff, uh, pertinent stuff, or just have fun with comedy and things like that, much <laughs> as yourself. Yeah. Oh, is that what you call this? <laughs> it's called a comedy. Oh, we got comedy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're doing all of these things, but what's what's funny is, and, and not funny, but you, you come from a family of entrepreneurs. Your mother has a dessert company. Your father has done restaurants, right. um, has also had a myriad of other business interests. H how do you think that uh, affected you? Now, now, you have the opportunity to go and work for either of your parents and, and help them in the, you know, the family business, so to speak. Um, but you decided not to. Was that a tough decision for you, or did you just kind of have it... Like, I've had enough of this. I think I kind of had it. Uh, it wasn't that I had enough with it uh, or anything of that nature. Uh, it just came up that both my parents being immigrants and seeing what they've done for themselves uh, on their own and also with the assistance of others, uh, that I kind of wanted to do that myself. Uh, not to say that they would hand the businesses over to me, but it was more one of those things like, they've championed this, let's try to champion something else. And uh, that's kind of the outlook that I've had. So let's do something uh, for myself, or let's see what I can come up with with a team of uh, different people. And so when you were getting ready to, to finish up school, you know, the, the graduation's coming up, you're finishing up your papers, and, and you were working at the restaurant that your father is part owner of. Was it, was it kind of scary thinking like, okay, I'm going to graduate, and I'm going to go back, and, and not that working for the restaurant is a bad thing, but a lot of people are... You know, a lot of people that wait tables and work in the restaurant or in school because it's, you know, it's the stepping stone to get into something else. So as you're getting there, um, getting ready to graduate, were you kind of wondering, like, okay, am I going to be doing this or am I going to have to do something else? Uh, I was strongly considering it. I mean, you're talking it's been a crutch for so long. Ever since I was 14, when I was able to get a worker's permit, I was there. Uh, I know the ins and outs of it fairly well. But at the end of the day, it came down to I could sit here and have this crutch, uh, very good crutch for that matter, and obviously not very many people are handed that opportunity. But I just saw the importance of venturing out and doing my own thing, and I think the, what I had to psych myself into something new and not falling back on the restaurant as much as I thought um, I should. It's always there. It's always going to be there for me. And I think I kind of needed to distance myself, not because any, of any kind of negative energy, but it was just more of a mental thing in my own mind to go ahead and do my own thing. And, and now that you're doing your own thing, um, is that thought always that, well, if it doesn't work out, I can go to the restaurant? Or are you kind of like, uh, I'm going to make this work? Are you at that point with the family? Because Scott... I know you, you two were bonding for quite some time. Absolutely. He grew up in a family-owned business mm -hmm. and been in the family-owned business his entire life. So sometimes, you know, when you have an opportunity to leave that, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's got to be something. Were your parents supportive of that, or were they like, well, your education can help us grow? Right. I, I mean, and that's, the, I think, the funny thing is my parents didn't want me to go off and uh, get a major in any, like, entertainment field, not because they didn't see any kind of practicality in it, but they're like, hey, uh, go become a lawyer. So I realized, hey, I like political science. Well, now here I am with a political science degree, and I'm not necessarily doing anything with political science. Uh, but I think what that degree has allowed me to do is you learn uh, how things work in the world. And once you know how things kind of work, or at least bits and pieces of it, 
uh, it's allowed me to uh, go ahead and venture other opportunities and other interests. And now you're working on um, you're working on a political. Uh, I am working campaign, on a political campaign, and with somebody that owns. A, I mean, that's got to be exciting. It is. Uh, it's very demanding, but very rewarding at the same time. And with the political campaign, you've got uh, good things and bad things that are always happening up. It's random, uh, like anything else. Uh, but overall, it's it's rewarding. Uh, this gentleman in particular, uh, he's he's been at it for a while. It's actually an international campaign. He's running for Italian Senate. So it's, very, uh, it's a very interesting dynamic, a very different dynamic than from what I'm used to. So. And how does that all fit in with like, the, the other media things that you're doing? Because you do, he's does, doing stand-up comedy. He's, he's doing improv. Uh, I say I dabble in him. I don't really dabble, dabble in him. I don't get right. on stage very often because they probably have my neck for it, on the other guys that I'm with. But I'm finding myself more uh, on the producer side of things, how to make things work, how to manage it, how to grow it, promote it. So what do you think motivates you? Uh, what motivates me? Um, from a young age, I realized I wanted to do great things. I had brain surgery when I was younger. And uh, I got out of it thinking, uh, I was only nine. I mean, I really couldn't understand the concept of death or anything of that nature. But I think being faced with that task, I realized I wanted to do, I, I was meant to be here for more than just working in the pizzeria or something. And that's very honest work, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I just thought it drove me to do other things. Did you know John Grossman? Uh, no, but in high school I had a teacher, Mrs. Grossman. Do you think they were related? So? Possibly, <laughs> quite possibly, actually. <laughs> See, we always have this obnoxious story all throughout the show. It's yeah. the Donumont or whatever. I, I so don't know, we go through? to the thing, yeah, pulls nice. it all the way through. So you're working with this uh, candidate for, for Italian Senate. Now, is this for uh, in Italy, or is this for something that's local? Well, it is something for, uh, that is in Italy. Uh, the way it works is there's Italian immigrants, obviously, all over the world. Uh, specifically, in North America and Central America, there's quite a huge uh, Italian uh, immigrant population. So Italy went ahead and allocated a senator uh, in this area of the world that would then represent these immigrants and these citizens, Italian citizens, back in Rome. Mm -hmm. So he is running for the Italian Senate position. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. so, so do you foresee yourself going and uh, traveling to Italy? Uh, that hasn't been uh, presented yet. So uh, it's very well a possibility, but in the meantime, I'm still plugging away with my media company. Uh -huh. and keep going. I, I'm always amazed when I talk with you, and um, I always feel it myself, you know, as I'm slowly getting my mojo back and moving on, you know, getting, getting involved in things that I, you know, really am passionate about. And again, and we thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Really thank you for everybody. Uh, Greg Struess reminding you, gstruessman at gmail.com. We want to hear from you, and we're also on Facebook. And um, I think that's it. I want to thank all of our crew. I want to thank Emilio, Scotty, Joe Vegas. We love you. Greg Struess, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.